Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, weather has been absolutely pants. Well, we're in July, it's supposed to be summer, and all it's done is rain. It looks like there's a bit of a break in the weather. So I'm going to head along to Mynith Mayo, one of my favorite slopes around here, um, to do a bit of uh, flying. I've had a couple of inquiries from subscribers about uh, wanting more information about flying uh, Mynith Mayo. And uh, there, there was uh, Guy Andy uh, recently who made, who made a trip midweek, a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and afterwards he had a, a, a few questions about it. So I thought I'd do a video specifically about how to fly this beautiful little slope. It, it's, it's not a big slope by, by Welsh standards, but it's a great slope to fly. So I'm going to show you where it is how to get there uh, from the M4 as you're, you're heading west through Wales, uh, how to get there. Uh, I'll put map up here and, um, and then when we get there, uh, show you where to fly and anything that you need to know about flying Mayo. So come on, enough waffle, let's get on the road. Okay, so I'm on the M4 and going through the Newport stretch from what they call the Malpa Strait uh, and I'm heading for Cardiff. So uh, I'm in the middle lane, I need to be in the inside lane because I'm going to come off the M4 and coming off at junction 32. Okay so we just follow this down and at the bottom there'll be a set of traffic lights uh, by a roundabout. I want Merthyr Tydfil which is to the right, but I'm going to stay in this lane, in the inside lane, and you'll see why in a second. Following the signs for Merthyr. Stay light, green lights, stay green. There we go. Okay. Following this Mazda in front. And we go around to the right. Oops, bit of a bump there. This road's shocking. We're going to carry on along down here now, and I think it's the second turning off the A470 that we want. Okay, so we've take, we've gone past the first turn off, and here comes the second one for Traforest Industrial Estate in Caerphilly, and this is the one we want. Now, at the bottom of the slip road, we're going to go around to the right, but I'm going to stay in this lane. I want to be in the sort of middle lane, really. You'll see it'll split into three. I want to stay in this middle one here. Okay, and this takes us up towards Nangaru. Okay, and I want the first turn off. There's some traffic lights up here. Just beyond the traffic lights, there's the GEC Aviation Factory. If you go past that, then you've gone too far. So you'll see a big concrete building in front of you. And that's the GEC. Here's the traffic lights, and I'm going to turn left at these traffic lights. And they're turning green, that's lucky. going to go to the end of the street. Now we'll just wait for these cars to go by. There we go. And then we're going to turn right. Yep. Now I always take this slowly because you never know what's coming down and it's a narrow road and it stays narrow uphill and the road's going to fork off to the left which is what we want here now there's a fork in the road just up here and we're going to go 
go left. Just here. Now we just keep going now. And we've got the cattle grid up here. I take it slow up here. And then I'd need to find somewhere where I can pull over and park on the left. Anywhere you can find really. The ground normally on the left is quite firm. So it's not too bad for parking. I could just pull in there a bit. Let's go a bit further. It's a good spot just here. And there's another spot here. I'm just gonna go. There's nothing else around me. I'm just gonna go down a bit further and see yeah, I can pull in here you now this is where on the left where we used to be able to park but you can see that there's been, been the farmers stopped us so I'm gonna go back a little ways So at the other end of the road, there is another cattle grid. And as you can see from here, there's a gate here. Uh, and you can park on here if it isn't too muddy. And just before that cattle grid, there's a, a rough track just here. Now, I don't really see people parking on there. You'd need, um, because of that, hump hump just here i think you'd need a, a four-wheel drive vehicle to get over there but i use it for uh, this part for turning around to head back up the road that way okay so you can see my car parked just over here and then here is a uh, pile of old tiles what have you so opposite here there's a track that runs diagonally all the way up to the top of the hill. And that's the track that we need to take. So where I showed you that, um, that turning point with the hump on it, if you were to walk down to that and then follow that track, it takes you up uh, to that end of the slope. The, the slope at that point there on that corner is facing westerly but it's not very good to fly because because it's curved it has a very narrow band of lift but if you follow it around the slope becomes steeper, uh, flatter but smaller and it faces sort of mm, nor northwest to northwest and um, I've flown that a few times, it's okay. Follow the track beyond that, and that takes you round to the opposite side of the hill. Um, and uh, I'll post, uh, I'll put a, uh, a, a link up here to the video, but uh, that takes you around to the far side where it's, the slope goes round more to sort of north, nor northeast to northeast. So now I just need to get the gear out of the car and walk up that, that hill. Now it's short, but unless you're really fit, <laughs> it can take it out of you. So <laughs> don't, be, uh, don't be scared to stop a couple of times to get your breath. I know I'll probably have to. So I hope you can hear me above the wind. When he was down by the car, I could feel barely any wind at all. Up here, I'd say we got somewhere around 18 to 20 miles an hour, probably something like that. And over here, you can probably just see behind me 
where I put my gear down. So I'm right at the top of the track now, and I'm probably only about 20 meters to the right of the track. You can go, say, about 20 meters, 20 to 30 meters to the, to the left. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I just think that the slope is a little bit steeper on the right-hand side of the track. Either way, you're usually going to get really good lift. And also to know if you're in the right place, you have the trig point just behind me, and then over here, you've got the mast. So uh, as long as you've got those two in your sight, you know you're in the right place. So Josh is here, and so is Andrew, and uh, Josh has brought his bat along, and uh, if you look back in my playlist, you'll see that there's, um, uh, there was a time, probably, oh, probably before COVID now, when we had a bit of a race. We were racing his bat and my ballistic along the, along the slope here. Well, we thought we'd have a rematch. Wind's blowing about 18 to 22 miles per hour. Whoa, there's a gust. Actually, it was gusting up to 26, but uh, <laughs> it's going to be fun. The air seems a bit dense, actually. I had a fly, and I couldn't really get any speed out of it, but uh, we'll see. Oh, yes, I remember that. Oh. Yeah. And Josh is away. And I'm away. He's a little lumpy out there. Bit of rain over there, look. Yep. Coming up behind you, dagger, 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 dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, she's picking up speed. I can't seem to get any speed out of this today. Boosh! Here we go, winds in a wrap. Keep losing the speed at that end. Yeah. On the left. It's not fast here at all today. Turning on the right is fine. Yeah. But turning on the left, I seem to be losing speed. <coughs>
Yeah. I think we've got rain coming on the right hand side yeah. shortly. Took it too far over and out of the compression zone. It's faster in the compression zone, certainly. But bumpier. heading over towards Pondy Preeth. <laughs> Gonna start coming around with some landing approaches to miss the rain. Josh land and then I'll land mine. Let's have a look. He's coming down. I'm going to take mine over. Oh, rock and roll! Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Well, there we go, guys. Uh, that's a session done. I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found it um, useful and informative. Um, so if anyone wants to come and have a, a crack at flying this slope, uh, as I know a few of you already have done, then I hope I've given you uh, enough info to be able to, to do that. Uh, if there's anything more that you want to know, please just drop them uh, a comment uh, below and I'll do my best to get back and answer your questions uh, but otherwise there's not a lot to say once you get to the top you just of the of the track you just go say about 20 meters to your right or 20 meters to your left but you can fly anywhere along there stay in the middle of the slope you'll be fine you've probably got about 100 meters on either side uh, of uh, of where you're standing uh, to be able to fly um, just that if you go a little bit by the end of that 100 meters on the left, there's a fence and you can't get past there. Okay. Uh, and then the other way to the right and uh, the, the slope tends to bend around then to uh, the north. Um, so that's it. It's all done. Um, I've left Josh and Andy up there and um, I'm going to get myself off home now for a nice cup of tea in this October weather. Yeah, it feels like October, it's only July. Right, hope to see you again very soon. Until next time, happy flying. <laughs>